Are you tired of dull, lifeless mixes that lack punch, glue and excitement? Do you find that the bass in your mixes doesn't translate well between different playback devices? I'm about to show you saturation tricks that will change the way you mix and take your mixing skills to the next level. Let's get going! Today we'll discuss about the secret sauce that adds energy, glue and excitement to your instruments, buses and two bus. I'll go over my favorite strategies for using saturation, one thing that really separates the newbies from the pros. That's why I know it will be a game changer for you no matter the musical genre you're working with. But first, what is saturation? It's a non-linear distortion effect that adds harmonics to a fundamental frequency resulting in a warmer, richer and fuller sound. If you compare it with distortion, which is a broader term, but we usually refer to distortion in mixing as a gritty more aggressive way of altering a waveform. So it will add density, fullness and richness to basically any kind of signal. The best way to show you how saturation work is to start with a sine wave. So here our fundamental is 100 Hertz. As you can see all the energy is concentrated at 100 Hertz and if we go up the curve is going to be very similar. If we go back to 100 Hertz, here we'll apply saturation. We'll apply a very warm type of saturation. So as you can see here, this is the same sound, but we have more harmonics above. So you can see a bump at 200, a bump at 400, a bump at 600 and so forth. So these are called even harmonics, 200, 400, 600, compared to odd harmonics, which could be 300, 500, 700. So saturation with even harmonics usually sounds warmer, fuller and richer, while saturation that brings more odd harmonics sounds grittier. So let's try a type of saturation which has more odd harmonics. You're gonna see the big difference. So you can see here tube saturation. We have big spikes at 300, 500, 700, but you can also see little bumps here at 2, 4 and 600. So tube is more rich and complex, but you can go with tape saturation, which will bring basically only the odd harmonics. You can see a spike at 300, 500, 700. There are five main reasons why you should use saturation in your mixes. The first one being harmonic enrichment. As you can see, all the harmonics being added to your fundamental really make your signal more complex and more dense. The second one is frequency spectrum filling. As you could see, all these harmonics are being added in your mix and create a fuller, denser type of sound. And also it brings definition and detail. So for example, with vocals, it really does wonders. The third perk of using saturation is increased perceived loudness without necessarily increasing peak levels to your mixes, which is critical in modern mixing. So by adding all these harmonics in your mixes, you're basically increasing the average volume, the average amplitude of your signal without affecting necessarily the peak levels. So saturation will help increase density and reduce in a healthy way the crest factor of your mix. The crest factor refers to the difference between the peak amplitude of your signal and the average amplitude of your signal. And if that difference is too big, it's going to be very hard to have a loud master at the end. Depending on the amount and the type, saturation can also help bring color and character to individual instruments or for the whole mix itself. When used subtly across multiple tracks, saturation can definitely help give a sense of cohesion and glue in your mix, which is basically hard to get with any other type of tool. Although digital mixing brought us wonders in terms of workflow, in terms of how we can now edit tracks, one of the biggest complaints with digital mixing is the fact that it sounds too clean. So still to this day, many mix engineers prefer to use analog outboard equipment to process audio signals. Analog equipment such as outboard gear, consoles and tape machines introduce subtle harmonic distortion. Digital mixing on the other hand aims at pristine accuracy but because of that can sound sometimes sterile. So using saturation in digital mixing with analog emulations can really bring back this type of flavor to your mixes. So I'll show you some really good ways to use saturation to bring back this analog warmth in your mixes. 
So let's listen to it without and with extra saturation to help bring the low mids up front. So here, this is basically a multiband saturator. And here we selected the triode algorithm. So as you can see in Ozone Exciter 11, there are a lot of options. So not only you can go mid side, you can go transient or sustain. Right now we're using it in the basic stereo mode. The reason why I want to use a multiband saturator on bass is the fact that I don't want to touch the subs. I want to leave them clean. I want to only increase density in the low mid region. That's why I'm selecting only this band between 100 and 383 hertz. And I'm using the triode here. So you can see the difference. If I solo this band only, it's going to tell you what it is doing. And it's working here in parallel. So it's only at 41% and the amount 7.2 out of 15. So let's listen to it in solo. So this is what it's adding on top of the actual signal. So it adds this extra power in the low mid area, which really brings the bass instrument forward, which is awesome. So I use this trick on bass all the time. If I would simply use an EQ there, of course that frequency would be a bit louder, but it wouldn't have the same density and fullness in the area. So using saturation in specific areas of the frequency spectrum, especially with Ozone 11 Exciter, it's very, very useful. The next trick I'm about to show you is use saturation on vocals. So this really helps bring clarity and definition, which is hard to achieve simply with an EQ. So let's listen to the vocals in solo with Ozone 11 Bypass. To the voices of my soul Severed at the throat Dealing with the devil at my door Down the rabbit hole Listen to the voices of my soul Severed at the throat Dealing with the devil at my door and especially in the mix context, you're going to see how it really brings forward the vocals. So let's listen to it with everything. I'll first start with Ozone Bypass and then we'll activate it as it plays. By clicking the gain match option here, I'm making sure that I don't let my brain trick me into thinking that it's sounding better because it's louder. So it's compensating the increase in gain and I can only basically understand the qualities or the enhancement of the effect with all the added harmonics. And why I love this plugin so much is the fact that here I can basically get rid of all the low end frequency content that will add clutter to my voice vocals if I actually saturate that part. So in this case, I'm only going at 260 something hertz above. So it's not touching the low end. Again, a reason why multiband saturation is so powerful. Let's listen to the vocals with and without saturation. Plunge into the depths of insanity With Show you more than mundane reality Separate you from taunts that live inside Charm and confronts loathing and tragedy With the full mix
So it brings the vocals forward in a subtle way. It's really helping to understand the lyrics, all the vocal patterns. It's very beneficial in this case. Next would be to use saturation on drums. So on individual pieces like kicks, snare, toms, it's amazing. But specifically on snare drum here, you can see the difference. So let's play the snare without saturation. So in this case, it's definitely not gain match, but you can see it brings more fatness and punch to the snare drum. One other trick I love to do is parallel saturation or parallel distortion. So you take any instrument in your mix and you route it on another separate bus and you incorporate it in your master or your main instrument bus at the end. So you're gonna see here the difference with parallel distortion on drums. So it's very subtle, but it adds presence. By itself, it doesn't sound very good, but it definitely helps in the context of a mix when you want to bring all the elements forward. So let's listen to the drum bus and I'll show you how I use parallel distortion to bring basically the closed mic, so kick, snare, and toms up front. And if you abuse, it's gonna start sounding a bit honky, but if you bring it just at the sweet spot, it can definitely help bring some presence in the mix to fight against all the other instruments. So let's play the drum bus by itself. Increase. So you can see it really adds this aggression and if you listen to the whole mix you're gonna feel a big difference. Let's mute the parallel distortion. So I'll exaggerate just a bit to show you the difference. I'll first start without parallel distortion on drums and then I'll add it as it goes. Since everything is fighting for the mid range, basically this helps bring the drums on top and you can see a perceived loudness on the snare drum and kick drum, a type of gritty aggression, which is really hard to achieve otherwise. So in this case, we're talking about distortion more than saturation because it's very edgy and gritty. Now that we've tried saturation on drums, bass, and vocals, let's try it on the mix bus. One of my favorite plugins for that is called Black Box by Plugin Alliance. So let's try it out. One thing that's very important with saturation is that if your gain is going up, you're gonna have this impression that it's better. So it's very important to try to gain match, or if you're not gain matching, at least to be aware of it. So what we'll try to do now is to look at the meter here while we activate the plugin. So as you're gonna see, the peaks are not going higher. So we're gonna play it without and then activate as it goes. So pay attention here to the peak levels. So what's very interesting is that the peak level actually went down as we activated black box, but the perceived loudness was higher. So this can be a real asset in your mixes to round off the transients and to really help bring the presence and the mid forward. So this is an amazing trick, but if you push it too hard, you may actually hurt your mix. So you have to be very careful on how you're applying it the thing we have to pay attention to is to not lose the punch, especially with the kick and the snare drum, the thump. But just a little sparkle can actually really improve to open things up. In this case, the plugin is working in mid-side mode, which really can help 
tailor your type of saturation. In this case, the plugin is working in mid side mode, which can really help to preserve kick punch. So let's listen to the mid channel in solo. Now let's listen to the sides. And if we listen to the whole mix with the plugin bypass and then activate it. So in this case, it took care of controlling a bit of the rumble in the low end and it really helped with the presence of the vocals and the shimmer of the overall mix. So in this case, it's very beneficial for the mix and it gives a nice little touch. So as everything, you should use saturation with moderation. And if you overuse it, you could create several problems. Excessive saturation can actually clutter your mix and can really glue things in a way that you can't perceive separation between the instruments. So you want to use it with moderation to still keep clarity and not go overboard. Using too much saturation can also create an abrasive sound which results in ear fatigue for the listeners. It can also skew the balance of frequencies and overemphasize certain elements of your mix, especially when you use saturation on your two bus. Using too much saturation will decrease the crest factor of your mix and if you go too far, it can actually hurt the dynamic range. So you have to be very thoughtful on how you're using it. It can also make your mix sound artificial or overly processed. So you have to be able to dose and be very thoughtful. And the more instruments you involve in the saturation process, for example, two bus, the more careful you have to be. If the video was helpful, please click like, subscribe, and see you again very soon.